Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. We are here at the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health meeting in Chicago, Illinois. I'm here with one of the keynote speakers, Dr. Dwayne Keller, uh, owner of Periopatech. Dwayne, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Mike. And Dwayne, it was an incredible uh, talk he gave about Periopatech and, and the ramifications of that, and we have another video on our site about that. But he's also an expert in sleep apnea, and he's been treating this for many years, and he has several insights in that as well. Dwayne, why don't you tell us a little bit about the sleep apnea and, and some of the things that you've found about this. One of the things is you've been treating TMJ for a long time, and in about 35% of the, of the uh, patients with sleep apnea, that's a, that's a factor. But just go ahead and, and, and talk to us about sleep apnea a bit. Well, the population I have, which is a population which have internal joint arrangements, headaches, etc., the vast majority of them have sleep disturbances, whether it's an upper respiratory disturbance or actually hypopnea apneic events. So I have a very skewed population because they're already predisposed to having problems. If you think about it, the airway, which is in the, the back of the throat, you run into a situation as if that jaw joint is actually dislocated and sitting in the back of the socket, the jaw is so far back and it can't come forward because it's in a dislocated relationship. So the population I'm dealing with, Mike, already is predisposed already to that. Already has a jaw back and then the musculature's back and so the airway is closed. Correct. Right. I'd say the vast majority of the patients I see, I'm trying to think of one that doesn't have a, a, really? an apneic yeah. event. So, so TMJ patients with the, the posterior dislocated joint, they're very highly predisposed. Correct. To, in fact, you say you can't think of one who doesn't have I'm trying to think of a single patient that we've seen in the last year or two where we have done a sleep study. The sleep study came back normal wow. and they had an internal joint wow. arrangement. So I think wow. the, the wow. correlation is extremely high. Nobody's ever really run a study. And then one thing as I was talking about earlier, we went to a couple of sleep labs. Sleep labs never look at joint problems. Right. And I think that's one of the things they have to because if you've got that physical restriction, how can the patient breathe if they can't come can't forward? The only thing you can do is use a CPAP a and blow the air through them. Right, right. And, and, and the oral appliances are, are functional and, and help in, a, in the mild to moderate sleep apnea, and the, and, uh, but the severe ones, uh, sometimes, but, but usually the CPAP is necessary. At that I time. think that the oral appliances, oral appliances with CPAP, or CPAP by itself, are three excellent ways you can help these people change their way of life and their quality of life. Right. Now tell us a little about, about bruxism at night, because the grinding of the bruxism, he has some great insights into this. Talk to us about that. I was doing a talk with a neurosurgeon, or neurologist, I'm sorry, by the name of Jerry Simons in Houston, Texas, and a neuro neurologist actually told me why our patients grind. And what he had found in doing his studies is that people grind their teeth to bring their jaw forward when they stop breathing. So it's a way that they actually are, felt, are able to open their airway. So it doesn't have to do with all the prematurity as you and I learned right. in school or anything like that. Right. People are grinding their teeth to stay alive. Stay alive to be able to get air. Now, now talk to us about the research that was done on this, the sleep studies with the, with the pads uh, you know, on the masters. And right. There's, there's data to back this up. The research, and it's, it's every single patient in the study. You're going to get this second hand because I got this from Jerry and you right. can check with Dr. Jerry Simons in Houston. But Jerry ran a study of 176 patients and in 176 patients, 176 patients ground their teeth to bring their jaw forward just before they started to breathe again. I don't think that's my happenstance. I think he fell on one of the answers that we dentists never even figured out. Right, right. So every single patient out of 176 patients, they would uh, go along and then they would have their apneic event where they would stop breathing. Then they would grind their teeth, and this was all on the readout, the, the, the sleep apnea readout, sleep study readout. And then after they ground their teeth, they would start breathing again. And so I think that's, that's what's going on there. I think one of the other important things is you have to watch their heart rate their heart rate when they started apneic event started to go so much faster right. and started to beat so much harder right. and my question to the doctors that were in the course is is this may be one of the reasons why heart attacks are so prevalent at night when right. you don't get them during the day because i've seen in our patients over and over and over again 
scared me to death. One of my assistants, her heart rate got up to 140 to 150 beats a minute. Right. Normally it's 60 to 70. Right. I mean, she would double her heart rate, but she would go into one of those abdic events. Then when she'd start breathing, her heart rate would go back down to normal. Right. So I think it's one of the things we're going to have to look at is possible correlations or, or find out. We're going to do some research and determine if that's really true. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about uh, TMJ and, uh, and the grinding and and all as, as that relates as we're speaking here before we close. I think that it's important that people look at the entire upper quadrant. We in dentistry have focused on the jaw joint but there's two ways you can open. I can open by holding my head still and move my jaw or I can open by bending my neck. Yeah. This and these problems are correlated with these problems. So it's really a whole upper quadrant dysfunction that we're dealing with. Wonderful. How can we get in touch with you, Dr. Keller, for more information about this? Probably the easiest way would be go through the Paraprotect website, uh, www.perioprotect.com, um, or you can find us, uh, we're in the internet. They can just Google drduanekeller.com or our, we have a website, www.drduanekeller.com. And Duane is D D U A N N E K E L L E R.com. Correct. All right. And it's Dr. First D R D R D U A N E K E L L E R.com. Got it. Dr. Keller, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure.